Hello ladies and gents, boys and girls, and other assorted fairy tale creatures. Today we're going to cover the basics of MIDI recordings. So what's MIDI? MIDI stands for Musical Instrument and Digital Interface. It's a computer language that allows computers and musical instruments to talk to one another. MIDI was developed way back in the early 80s and is still used today, almost 30 years later. It's one of the few technologies perhaps that has remained pretty much unchanged. It's very different to audio recording with microphones. With MIDI, only instructions are recorded. The simplest of these MIDI commands is the note on, note off instruction. A MIDI file looks a bit like an old piano player scroll, and in fact most MIDI editors refer to their interface as a piano roll. When you press the key on a real piano, an actual sound is heard. When you press a key on a MIDI keyboard, all that is heard is a note on command. When you release the key, all that is heard is a note off command. You need two things to create a MIDI recording, a MIDI controller, such as a MIDI keyboard, and a tone generator, such as a VST, VST synth in Cubase, to create actual sounds from the MIDI note on off instructions. Cubase comes with lots of these sound modules called VST instruments. You can use any MIDI controller to trigger them, or the piano roll editor in Cubase. For now, I'm going to use my keyboard MIDI controller. Let's look at an example. OK, so here we are over in Cubase now. First thing I'm going to do is enable the rack. So I'm going to come up to the window layout icon up here and make sure that racks is checked like so. And that will give us access to the media bay and the VST instrument rack. So let's create a new instrument with this icon here. We're going to search in this box for Groove Agent, Groove Agent SE in fact, and we're going to add a new track like so. And Cubase will automatically create a new track and open up the VST instrument associated with it. Groove Agent is a, is a drum sampler and pattern player. Um, I'll do another tutorial later on uh, with a more detailed overview of how to use it. On the left hand side of Groove Agent, uh, you can see a set of pads which have two main modes, instrument and pattern. The right hand side of Groove Agent can be set to edit mode, uh, mix options and other uh, more detailed editing uh, options. Across the top you've got access to file handling and automation. So let's load the instrument and get started. We're going to click just here, where it says Kit 1, and choose Kit from the hundreds that are shipped with Cubase. I'm going to choose Vinyl Kit 2, double click on that, and that will load the patterns for that particular instrument. In pattern mode, you can select any pad to preview its MIDI loop. And on the right hand side, in edit mode, you can change how you interact with those pads um, by changing the play mode, the trigger mode, and the length of the patterns. If we come over to the pattern library drop down box over here, you can select an entirely different set of grooves for, for each pad. You can also trigger the pads using the play button and stop button at the top here. So let's stop playback and switch over to instrument mode now. This gives us a new view. Um, each pad shows the name of the sound or sample that's assigned to it. And if you click a pad, you can hear the sample assigned. The lower down you click on a pad, the quieter it will be, and the higher you click up on a pad, the louder it will be. There's also a solo button and mute button for each pad, and in the top right corner of each one, you will see the MIDI note that triggers the sound. So if I play an F1 on my MIDI keyboard, that will trigger the clap sound. If I play a C1 on my MIDI keyboard, that will trigger the, the kick drum sound. If you right click on a pad, 
it gives you another set of attributes you can edit such as renaming the pad, setting the color and many more. On the right hand side of Groove Agent in instrument mode, with the edit tab selected, you can alter many settings with the sub tabs underneath uh, the pitch, filter settings, amp and sample settings. On the mixer tab, you can balance each bus, you can add aux effects and alter the master bus and add effects to that to the whole kit also. Let's switch back to pattern mode. Adding patterns to your project is very easy. It's just a case of left clicking and dragging the pads into your project like so. And you can repeat the same pad or add any combination you wish like so. So you can create patterns very quickly in your projects. Let's close Groove Agent now. Okay, so let's create a new track in a slightly different way now. We're going to come up to the project window, select add track and add an instrument track, which is a combination of a MIDI track and a VST instrument combined together. We're going to leave the count at one. If you change that, you will create multiple tracks with the same VST instrument when you click the add track button over here. So I'm going to select Halion Sonic this time. There we go, Halion Sonic SC in fact. And I'm going to add the track. So here's Halion Sonic, which is sort of an all purpose um, tone generator. In the box at the top, again, you have access to hundreds of sounds. Um, I'm going to choose a piano sound, double click on it to load it. And then if I play a few notes on my keyboard, I can hear the sound I've selected. Let's close that. The next thing I'm going to do actually is rename my tracks. Let's uh, double click here. Drums. Uh, double click on the track underneath. Piano. OK, let's record them. So we need to make sure that the track is selected, highlighted grey. The record enable button is turned on, it's highlighted red, and the monitor enable button is turned on so we can hear the sound from our VST instrument. Okay, so let's press record. I'm going to move over to my MIDI controller and play a few notes. dead easy. It's also very easy to edit MIDI data um, which is great for non-musicians. If you double click on the track you just created you'll see the key editor which is a, a visual representation of your MIDI data you've just recorded. I've just recorded. The pitch of the notes is represented by their vertical position so the higher the notes the higher they sound the lower the notes, the deeper they sound. The length of the notes is represented by their horizontal length here. You can move notes around, left click and drag them around. You can delete notes, grab the rubber up here. You can add notes with the pencil tool. And you can edit your existing notes by dragging the end position and start position like so. So we've only just scratched the surface of MIDI editing, but it should give you an idea to get started with your uh, your first musical creations. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.